Today we hope to achieve a demonstration of the combined offering that Fire Investigations UK and BRE bring to the marketplace. Today's demonstration will be a representation of a typical staff room within a commercial setting. The contents of the room include worktops, cupboards, kitchen sink and some white goods as well as table and chairs and some sofas. These are typical of the items that you would find uh, to provide welfare facilities in a staff room in such a setting. Um, we have chosen this demonstration so that as we carry out the fire you can see the typical damage that might occur as a result of a fire in a staff room. Um, staff rooms are one of the more common uh, rooms of origin where fires occur within a commercial setting. Um, we will then use it also to, to demonstrate the kinds of signs and symptoms that you would look for within a staff room where a fire has occurred in order to determine the point of origin and the cause of that fire. See visible smoke above the toaster. Okay, so flames are now showing above the toaster. Um, as the fire is directly adjacent to the wall, you see immediately it starts to get flame extension up the side of the wall. But the fire isn't really interacting with the compartment much at this stage, so it's, it's behaving more or less as a fire in isolation. Obviously at this point, if there was a detector on the ceiling of the room, or even in a corridor outside the room, you would have expected the detector to have actuated by now. Okay, so the fire is establishing itself in the back of the toaster, and starting to come down the back of the refrigerator. And you'll note that as the flames start to get bigger, there's already a bit more energy in the smoke. So whereas it was drifting out beforehand, it's now definitely got an upward movement as it comes past the, uh, the downstand of the room. So what you can see with the smoke now is quite a nice example of what we refer to as the neutral plane. So between the boundary of the hot smoke layer and the cold room below. And as the fire starts to get bigger and the smoke production increases, you'll see that layer start to come down. So you've seen some strips of trunking. We, we included electrical trunking in for the power supplies to television and appliances. And you've seen the strips of plastic fall down as the trunking's failed and the cables then become exposed directly to the, uh, the heat of the fire. Smoke layer starts to turn black. That's as the fire is starting to require more uh, ventilation than is readily available, so you start to get less efficient burning occurring against the black smoke, more carbon particles in the smoke. Some of you may be starting to feel the heat already coming off this. That's the light fixture that's come off the ceiling. And again, the energy of the fire is continuing to increase, the velocity of the smoke that's coming out of the room is continuing to increase. And at this point, the hot smoke layer is re-radiating heat, quite a lot of heat, back down onto the fire and indeed everything else in the room. So it's accelerating the growth of the fire and heating up the surfaces of all of the contents within the room. Top surface of the sofa on the right, you can see it's starting to paralyse. Those are volatiles produced by the amount of heat that's being um, radiated down from the hot smoke layer that pyrolysis to occur. We've got burning over the top of this cupboard and underneath it to the right. So as the fire continues to grow, all that, all that process of recycling heat, heat going up into the hot smoke layer and then being radiated back down onto the, the fuel below, all of that is increasing and recycling that, causing further increase in the fire size. Again, if you crouch down, you'll see there's actually flaming within the smoke layer now as well. And as, as that gets 
gets hotter, the flaming will extend out through the smoke layer as the heat becomes sufficient to actually start recombustion of the, the partially burnt gases that are within the smoke. So the flame is starting to smoke through the screen and we've had to collapse out of our The smoke is ignited to the right, which will like increase the amount of fuel that's involved quite significantly uh, and converting material to the table. Here we go. We're now heading towards flashover. Now imagine that um, you were investigating this scene and you got some witness testimony to say oh yes just before the fire service arrived and as the fire service arrived let's say the window blew out I ran into that room and I did X well you can all appreciate now that nobody could have run into that room Moving further along, you can see some nice fire patterns on the wall here. And really, it, it's forming a small V. Now, generally, and not in every fire, but generally, we tend to use this as probably an arrow as a place we want to start looking for where the fire developed and spread across up the wall and across the ceiling. So, we're looking at fire patterns, examining fire patterns.